Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Julie and I have a special guest today. We met this lovely lady in Ecuador, and she's traveling the world on her Social Security. And believe it or not, it's typically less than $1,000 a month. And so she's a senior female traveling alone, less than $1,000 a month, most months. And so she's an interesting person. Hi, Lindy. Hi. And your real name is Melinda, but you go by Lindy. Melinda, right. Okay. And so you are currently in Laos. We're in Albania at the moment, so we're doing a Zoom call with you. Um, you, you have some interesting travel stories and travel tips, don't you? Yeah, it's been quite an adventure. Well, you're traveling, living on your Social Security. Um, and so you, first off, let's, I guess, talk about some of your travel tips on how do you get from around on this under $1,000 budget typically? What's, what recommendations? Well, I use, um, uh, it's actually a platform uh, for volunteers. It's called World Packers, and it's, I believe it's only about $49 a month. And, and that gives you, you actually, you set up a profile, and then you, um, you pretty much put your experiences, what you're good at, what you're not so good at, put pictures, and then you look for, um, you know, volunteer opportunities, and then you just go to the country you're looking for, and, um, you know, let's say, you know, you want to go to Malaysia, and then you put the city in town, you know, city or um, the city and country, and then it'll, it'll bring up all the jobs or all the volunteer um, positions. And then you just start writing to um, the hosts and hopefully some of them write back. Usually at first I didn't get much of a response, but now I, I've done quite a few of them and I've gotten mostly good reviews. So now I get pretty much, you know, pretty good response from the ones that I write to. What kind of work are you and, doing when you do these types of gigs? Uh, it kind of varies. Like uh, one place I was doing farm work. It was, was this was in Samix, Germany. I was doing uh, some farm work, uh, work with animals. Uh, do, I was doing some just domestic kind of cleaning kind of work, some gardening, that kind of thing, planting a lot of dahlias and, and tulips. And then I did work with some people with uh, handicapped, uh, can't, you know, diff, uh, people with disabilities. And I think so, you were teaching then, English then, when we met you. Yeah, I was teaching English in, in Ecuador as a second language. So I lived on that about the first year, year and a half. Well, about two, the first two years that I was living there, I was living on the money that I was making teaching English. And uh, then I was doing some gigs, playing music um, in a little band called the Cocopelli Moonlighters for a while. You, you play the flute and you play the ukulele. <laughs> uh, ukulele and the guitar and the and the mandolin. Oh, nice! So. And you were just living with a Buddhist monk recently, right? Yeah, that was in uh, near Bangkok, Thailand. So that was mostly working with kids, and I just mostly taught her a little bit of English, worked with them on some English, and I played the banjolele and the ukulele for them. So that was it. And that, that gave you room and board or just room? What, what did that do for you? Uh, with, that, with that one, I paid a little bit uh, because I had so much time off. So it was only about $9 a day and I got room and then three meals a day. And so it wasn't wow. really very much work. Um, but other ones, but the other ones I've, you know, usually get uh, room and board. Like I was also had one in Malaysia working at a uh, dog rescue for, for dogs so it was really, you know, I was in there for two hours a day and and um, cleaning up after and feeding the dogs you know and the, those people were really nice too so I had a um, a free you know room to stay in and plus they fed me and so it was nice and so and, you, do, um, you do a lot of the volunteer stuff also sometimes they're not doing volunteer stuff I think right now you're in a hostel on your own uh, yeah, I, I'm just I'm staying at a hostel, and I think it, when it comes to it's around five or five to six dollars a night, so it's pretty cheap to stay in a hostel. You know, and you get a, a bed with curtains that you can draw, so that's really nice. And then to eat a, a meal, you can get for a couple of dollars, so it's it's pretty inexpensive here. Okay. I was in Sri Lanka too, and I did a mural of a. And I, I really, I just kind of told the guy I didn't, I knew how to 
paint and I really didn't, but I it turned out pretty good. It was a monkey climbing a tree and it said, strive to climb higher. <laughs> and then um, let's see what else. Oh, and then I was in Egypt and I was doing some cooking. I just told the guy I knew how to cook. I really didn't. So I just, but I just followed the recipe book and taught him English and he was really nice too. <laughs> And, and you've been so, to like over 40 countries doing this type of stuff. Yeah. And then I was also pet sitting. I did some pet sitting in uh, the UK and England and in Scotland also. Oh, tell us about and your pet sitting. Cause we have so many people asking these kind of questions about pet sitting. And if Melinda can pet sit for you, you can let us know. And we'll Lindy. put in contact. Yeah. Lindy, <laughs> Melinda, she goes by, by both. But we'll find yeah, um, here. Well, the, 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 the site is called, um, trusted pet sitters and um mainly you it's kind of the same thing you set up a profile and then you um you know you find hosts in different areas you know like i wrote wrote to the uk and there's a lot of pet sitting in the uk in scotland and england if you want to you know if you want to go there um so basically basically you just write to the host say hey, i'm Melinda. i'm interested in, in taking care of your dogs or whatever you have they have and and then if they're interested, they'll respond. And, you know, so I, I pet sat for a real nice couple in, uh, in Northern Scotland. It was real, they were really nice. And then I uh, pet sat for a little Cocker Spaniel puppy in England. So that was, that was pretty cool too. It was a um, nice place to live and the people around were very nice. And there's a little pub that was right, at, right around the corner. So I could go, um, they had an open mic. So I went and played at the open mic and that was fun. And you know. <laughs> Now, I, I've seen, uh, you, you've got so many great pictures. You run around with uh, a lot of people younger than you quite often. I, I see you on your adventures and um, out of different places and, and your travels. Uh, so it seems like you're, you're not just hanging out with people like your age. You're part of a community of, of nomadic travelers, adventurers. Yeah, well, this it kind of happened that this girl... I met at a reggae bar and uh, she, she said, you know, she wanted to rent a car and go to Pi. It was, you know, a little ways from, from um, I was in Chiang Mai at the time. And uh, so I, we, we uh, traded um, WhatsApp numbers and then she, um, I wrote to her and she says, well, I'm going, I'm getting this rental. You, are you interested? And I'm like, well, why not? You know, so. She was only like 19, but we had a blast. We had so much fun. <laughs> we went to waterfalls, went to hot springs, went to a cafe and, and painted through pictures. And yeah, she was a lot of fun. And I'm going to meet her in uh, Vietnam, Hoi, Hoi An, uh -huh. Vietnam. So I'm planning to meet her there and celebrate this, have, go to this lantern festival. Be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done some couch surfing too, right? Which uh, means you stay with someone for a week? Yeah. The first one I did was in Zurich, Switzerland, and it was this fellow and his husband. And they were the, the funnest people, you know, and I just had such a good time with them. They had this, uh, it was kind of a toaster that they put on the table. And then they had like this pieces of bread with cheese, and then you'd melt the cheese on the bread. And it was really good. That's, and that's then a cheap way to do dirt. Long. And then I got another one with a lady in Amsterdam and she put me up for like a week and she was so nice and took me around and I had a oh, really good time wow. with her too. And how and, did you find um, this kind of opportunity? Well, it's just a, it's a platform called couch surfing. And then um, you put your, you do the same thing, put your profile up and then you find hosts and, you know, you go to, you um, write where you want to go and then find the host there. And then you write to them and say, you know, I'm looking for a, a place to, you know, stay. And, and if they can, can they'll, they'll put you up. This one guy in Alexandria, Egypt, put me up for a couple of nights in a really nice flat for free. It was so nice. Are, are you was, nervous about staying with somebody that you don't really know and, and doing this couch surfing or going to these families? I mean, is, do you have uh, any worries about your safety? I haven't had any problems so far. Everybody's been really, really super nice at this point. And so. with a lower budget, how, you know, you're, you're flying at, all over the place. I mean, you've been to Europe, you've been all over. Um, where are you finding your best deals on flights? What type of sites are you using? Um, I, I don't know. There's, there's one called Skyscanner. Mm -hmm. um, and I usually find some really cheap flights there. So that would be one that I would, I would recommend. Um, 
And then you guys, you, you also have to, there's certain days that are really good to fly, like Tuesdays and Wednesdays mm-hmm. are usually cheaper days to fly. And um, so I'll just like keep searching, you know, like I'll, I'll say, okay, you know, this Tuesday, you know, it's like hundred dollars cheaper than if I flew on Friday. And then I just keep looking and then I'll find like the rock bottom cheapest price I can. But that, that's a good site that I like to use. And there's another one called Hopper. Uh, let me ask you a question about you. Um, when did you decide that you're going to fly by the seat of your pants and do this type of life? And what were you doing in your life before you started doing this? Um, I was, well, I did do massage therapy for a while. And then I did do, I was a musician. And so I played it, you know, little small gigs and made a little extra money doing that, just supplemental income. And, um, and then I did like uh, home care, you know, sitting with elderly and that kind of thing. And, and then I did pet sitting. So I got a number of gigs taking care of people's pets. So, so, so when did it come to your mind to say, Hey, I'm leaving the U S and, and just going to wherever I go, wherever the wind's blowing. Uh, this was March of 2019. So like about five years ago, um, and that's when I went to Puerto Rico and I was um, with a volunteer group called All Hands and Hearts for a couple of weeks. Um, we were uh, repairing roofs on the top of homes, you know, that have been damaged from Hurricane Maria. So I did that for a couple of weeks. Oh, that's wonderful. And then after that, I went to Ecuador and then I started doing the teaching English. I was supposed to be a volunteer, but I did get paid some because I couldn't have lived if I didn't get paid something. But I got paid enough that I could afford, you know, a, a, you know, a nice little. Actually, I lived in Ecuador. It was really cheap. I got it was one hundred and sixty dollars a month, but it included my Wi-Fi, my electricity, everything. For, I, I was paying about a third of what I was paying in the U.S. just for renting a room from somebody. I, I, when we met you in Ecuador, if I recall, you said you were, was it less than $600 a month you were living on? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And now you're yeah. you're doing what, about $800 a month, I think you said? Yeah, so, eight, 825 so, Yeah, about 825 incredible. a month. Yeah. You're so creative and all the things that you're willing to to put yourself out to do. I think it's just amazing. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's it's been it's been quite an adventure. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about your bus ride the other day. That uh, since this recent events that just happened, because we can show people that you kind of roll with the punches when things unexpectedly happen. What happened on your bus ride, and where were you coming? Um, in um I, I I bought a package from Chiang Mai to um, I'm in Luang Prabang, Laos. Mm-hmm. Um, so I bought this. Uh, so anyway, we got this uh, kind of a minivan and then we went to the White Castle and all that. And then we went to the border in the minivan. And from uh, the border, we uh, caught a ride in the sleeper bus. And it was really, uh, I, I did another one in, in uh, India, which was much nicer. I had a whole bed to myself, but this was like, it was like a um, twin size bed. It was even smaller than a twin size bed in your sleeping right next to a complete stranger and you really don't have any room at all. <laughs> so, so um, it was pretty packed. In fact, they even had people sleeping in the aisleway, so you couldn't walk in the aisle because there were people you know, sleeping yeah. on the aisle. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was about, um, so anyway, it was about three in the morning. Us just pulled over and we're like, everybody's like, what's going on? You know, I'm, we're stopping here. And it didn't leave after that. And so when it got daylight, we all came out and we saw the, that the engine door was open and the, and the driver was gone. And it was like, okay, what is, what's happening? It looks like the van or the bus broke down. And so he came back with some kind of fluid. I don't know what kind of fluid. I think it was some engine fluid or oil or something. And... Um, so then he was trying to get it started. And all we could hear him doing was banging on the engine. I don't know what he was using, a crowbar or something. <laughs> and then uh, some of the locals uh, wanted to get their money back because they paid him in cash. They weren't on like a package like I was. And he wouldn't pay, give them any money. And then he took off on a scooter. I guess somebody came and he left it on a scooter. And so <laughs> we were just all kind of stranded. <laughs> and so one lady called. Um, I think she was from uh, Canada. 
And she, um, so she called, she says, you know, we're stranded here. Can you send another bus? And the, and the lady's like, well, you know, the bus should be there by two o'clock, but we can't guarantee it's going to come. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> you can't guarantee it's going to come. <laughs> so, so um, anyway, we didn't know what, what to do. Some people got to ride hitchhiking. And so there was probably about 15 or no, I guess there was about 15 of us left. And um, so finally, I guess some lady called this tuk-tuk. And so about 13 of us got in this tuk-tuk, but we were like stranded for hours, you know, trying to figure out how to get a ride. We tried hitchhiking, nobody would pick us up. So we finally got a, a ride into, um, you know, it to here. And I uh, rode with uh, some people there from Wells and I went with them to their hostel and just got a bed there. So it was, it was an interesting <laughs> trip. It, and you're such an incredibly likable person. I, I remember meeting you in Ecuador and, and you're fun. So I assume that you have to have a social network. You have to be with people. So do you use Facebook for any uh, meetups? Do you, do you meet people through Facebook? How, how do you meet most people? Um, a lot of times I like to do hostels because usually you can meet people, you know, at the hostel that you can sometimes do things with. Uh, sometimes there's meetups, you know, have you ever been to meetup.com? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have meetups different places, you know, where like uh, expats go or tourists go. And so, you know, it's, great tip. It's, yeah. Yeah, we, we do a lot of the expat Facebook groups, but yeah, we'll look into that. Of course, um, join our Facebook group as well. So it's, uh, you know, if you're watching and you're not part of our Facebook group, go to Warren Julie Travel, look us up on Facebook and you can join our group. Yeah, but Sometimes I'm just by myself. I do things alone, you know, and, um, you know, or sometimes I meet people and we end up doing something like I was in Bulgaria and I was at a hostel and a bunch of us decided to go hiking up in the mountains. So we went hiking together and that was a lot of fun and just, just, just kind of whatever. And then like meeting this girl, you know, this 19 year old girl. And I thought, why would she want to hang out with somebody my age? But she didn't seem to care. She's from Germany. You know, maybe they don't care in Germany. So. Well, you know, Lindy, your your life, I'm sure, is going to give some inspiration to some folks to understand that you're a senior citizen living on Social Security, traveling the world, flying by the seat of your pants. And any any idea if you're going to stop this at some point? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, I guess when I'm not able to travel anymore, you know, and I'm just like in a wheelchair or something that I just can't do it. <laughs> I'd back, I'd probably want to go back to Ecuador. I, I really loved Ecuador or, or the other place that I'd like to go is Ireland. It's my, one of my favorites too. Well, of course, Ecuador is easier to stay in than Ireland um, for an American, but the, um, and the cost of living is definitely a lot lower in Ecuador. You're currently in Laos. So what, what is your plan coming up next? Are you just going to try staying Southeast Asia? Are you, what, what are you planning? Um, well, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna go to Vietnam and I'm questioning whether to go to Cambodia. I probably wanna get back to Thailand because I left my big suitcase in Bangkok. So, you know, probably have to go back to Bangkok to get my suitcase. And then maybe go back to, um, go back to Malaysia because I could stay there three months <laughs> and it's pretty cheap. Wait, wait, where did you leave your suitcase? In Bangkok, Thailand. Like in a locker or what? Yeah, the inner storage because I just I just got tight was so big and heavy and I was just tired of dragging it around and so I and actually you, I think I think probably I'm going to make up for what I have to spend for the storage on not having to drag it around because I'd have to get a taxi or some you know where I can walk places with just my bags you know just my backpack I don't have to with dragging that thing around it's just too hard to walk long distances but I can without it you know. Now, I know people will be very interested. What are you paying to store that suitcase? Um, I don't know. It's like about 20 baht, which is, I think, probably about 70 cents a day or something. I don't know. So it's not that much. So roughly, that's going to be uh, $21 a month. And and you're flitting around the world. So what do you normally pack? Or do you pack really light? Yeah, well, I just uh, mainly just uh, I got two pair of cargo pants, a uh, pair of yoga pants, and then another pair of shorts. And then I've got, you know, just a few shirts and then, um, you know, my toiletry items, you know, soap and toothpaste and toothbrush kind of stuff. And um, I carry my own towel. 
and um, and I got uh, I got a pair of flip flops, pair of boots, and a pair of shoes. Now so you I spent usually go with the. You spent time in Ireland, so it was colder in Ireland. So what would you do if you went from say Ireland to Thailand? What do you do about your clothing? Because you've got to have some warmer things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I'm keeping that suitcase. But, well, it does have two of my instruments. But, but yeah, um, my, my thing is I got all my warm clothes in that suitcase. I, so. well, let, let's real quickly on Ireland, because obviously you're, you're on a pretty good uh, tight budget. Ireland is known to be one of the most expensive countries in Europe but you really enjoyed Ireland. So what was your key to having a good time in Ireland? Well, I, I did, um, I had two work exchanges there. One was in Connemara and one is in Cashel. And so I got, you know, free room and uh, Cashel, I didn't get so much food in um, Connemara. We at least got a, a free breakfast. And uh, so I bought some of my food, but I got a free place to stay. And so, and then when I went to uh, Galway, there was like a, a hostel there that was related to the hostel I was staying with in Connemara. Mm -hmm. So I got, when I went to Galway, I got to stay there for free too. That's fantastic. Well, Lindy, I'm going to tell you real quickly, thank you so much for joining us. You're an inspiration you're a fun interview. And everybody, as a reminder, Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in different countries, different places. We're trying to share our experiences, our expenses with you, talking to great expats, doing interviews with people that can help you to decide if this is a lifestyle you're looking for. So we hope you're going to subscribe, give this video a like, and until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.